welcome back to the show. Today we have Alex Brown. He's the CEO and founder at Subscription Hacks. Alex, welcome back to the show. How's it going, Kevin? Good to be back. I'm, I'm very well. Um, I appreciate you taking the time to be back on the show. I, I think we had a really good chat on kind of the radio version of, of, of the show. I thought, you know, have you kind of back because I think what you're doing at Subscription Hacks is really useful for a lot of people. But maybe before we get into all that fun stuff, let's get to know you a little bit better and start off with where you grew up. Yeah, I actually grew up close to Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Okay. Canadian boy. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> Very cool. So walk me through kind of your university kind of career. Um, what did you take in university and why? Um, like rather ironically, I went to, to university for business. I was already like kind of an entrepreneur. I had my own construction company and landscaping company. So I went to school for business to try and get a really awesome paying job when I graduated. Cause it was like, sure. yeah, the world owes me like 150K <laughs> as soon as I'm done school. Um, that's not how it actually ended up. And, uh, found myself like not able to get jobs. Like most people, you know, you don't have the skills sure. in order to get a job and you can't get the skills without a job. So I started doing some volunteer work and getting involved with like a startup scene in pretty much any way I could and non NGOs and different opportunities to basically help anyone out. I could figure, um, sure. and that just kind of kept snowballing into more and more opportunities in the startup scene. Sure. So, I don't want to spend a huge amount of time on kind of your, your history. You know, people can go check out the radio version if they want to hear like kind of a deeper dive into that. But you've had some, you've been a part of some really successful kind of companies and, and actual physical products. Do you maybe want to kind of give us a quick overview of your career up until kind of subscription hacks? Yeah. So it actually is kind of like a trajectory um, that seems to look pretty natural when you're looking back at it. But uh, my business partner and I started a wearables company, like a, a notification band at first we did. Um, okay, very cool. For that, which was around $100,000 in sales and wow. figured out how to make the product and then ship it. And it, like the economics just weren't working trying to compete with Fitbit. So sure. kind of moved on to the next product, which is like a portable hitting mat. Um, it was basically just like we had ideas and we just started getting them made or getting them prototyped and then seeing if we could put marketing behind them. Um, and you know, try and make some money somehow more, more or less at that point. Um, and because we had a knack for doing that, people just kept asking us like, Hey, you know, can you guys do our videos for us or our websites or you know, set up our campaigns? So we started an agency. We were helping other people do that. Um, and all the stuff we learned from that, we were able to put into our next product, which is cool box. And, um, that actually eventually landed Chris, a business partner on shark tank for it. Very cool. Quite as good as at, I'm still not as good at video as his, but I'm, I definitely wasn't as good. <laughs> Um, back in those days, but um, that was a tremendous experience. And then spent some time on the back end of that, we got a licensing deal. So we were able to pass everything off to a partner who then kind of gives us a royalty for the product they sell moving forward. But it helped us to get like all the engineering done, which was you know, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Sure. We have 2000 units costing well over a hundred dollars each. So it was a big capital expenditure. So we, we kind of got the investment in exchange for the licensing deal and learned how to produce an extremely complicated product and the defect rate was like super low so we were super amped about that but um, none of us were really passionate about the toolbox anyway so it was, it was kind of teetering off and we were passing that over and getting things all set down and then um, very like kind of organically we decided to do beard club we had like okay. at that time working <laughs> in a startup house uh, which is basically something like a scene out of um, what's the show silicon valley Cine, yeah 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 uh, so we had that except everybody had beards and it was, you know, <laughs> be natural and be free and grow your beard. And we were kind of getting into like holistic health and eating naturally organic and stuff like that. And then we started getting into beard oil. Cause like, what else are you going to do when you have a huge beard? Sure. Uh, and at that time there really weren't a lot of options. There were a couple companies that did okay. One company was on shark tank, but um, there was no like market leader. And we started to get really excited because all the products were like $20. We're like, why don't we do like everything we know about doing big launches for products and, and branding and do like, you know, sell, sell this product for a dollar instead of 20, but sell to 20 people. Right. Um, and that just kind of became the obsession that was dollar beard club and started to put together everything for that, all the videos, the products kind of in tandem as our other company was kind of teetering down and being passed off. We were able to work on this new project and built it up over six months before we launched it. Um, and then things went pretty postal after that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that's kind of how, well, I heard of Coolbox, but, um, 
that's kind of how I heard of you was through kind of that, right? And, and that kind of how, because I remember your, your video went quite viral and I, like it got shared tons, right? By, yeah. by a lot of people. Um, so how did you kind of move away from Beard Club and, you know, found kind of subscription hacks and, and what exactly is it? Yeah, it was, uh, it was a result of a lot of things, really. Um, okay. I really enjoy speaking like uh, at various events. Like I'm, I'm pretty much all over the place right now and I, I love giving back. At the same sure. time, I got asked by so many people, um, you know, how did you guys do this? How did you do that? And I'm able to give people that are just starting out or just kind of scaling um, or in similar spots, like nuggets of information, like 10 of them in like a few minutes. And like, they're like, oh my God, this is amazing. And I was like, man, that felt <laughs> sure. really good. Cause like, the only way that I know how to do that is because I screwed something up really bad. Sure. Um, so this just kind of happened more and more. And I started to, uh, I guess, just kind of like take a step back from Beard Club. And I talked to my business partner, Chris, and I was like, hey, man, like I really want to go pursue um, helping others and building this like accelerator community. Like, I want to, I just love working with entrepreneurs. They're cool people. And, sure. um, you know, in doing so, I get to learn a lot as well. Um, but it started as, uh, before I even like decided to step back from Beard Club, it started as simple as like, hey, I'm going to write like an ebook. I'm going to like brain dump everything I learned <laughs> and put it all into one place. And then, you know, a bunch of my friends who do a lot of online courses were like, dude, you have to do a course. Like you've got this great name and story and like all this experience. Sure. You know, do an online course. And so I kind of formatted it like that and I've got all kinds of videos. But I also think that one thing, one area that the course world kind of falls short on I don't know if you've bought some, but I've yeah, I have yeah, for sure. And you just kind of like you get in there and you look at some stuff, and like some of them I've gone all the way through. Other ones I just kind of like open once and that's it. Totally, yeah. So I'm just really trying to figure out how to make this something special, make it like an actual accelerator program. So I'm trying to put as much of my own personal touch in there as possible. And there's kind of a networking area where people can talk directly to me, talk to my partners in this who help me write it. Some of like the more tactical stuff on Facebook marketing. I have interesting Fred who helps me out with that because that was never my Sure. Um, specific area of focus. It's kind of been like one of the, the underlying reasons, reasons why I wanted to step back from beard clubs. Cause I was like, I don't, I don't know my value. It's like, I don't, Interesting. Know, how to, I don't know. I don't know run how to face. I don't know how to run Facebook ads very well. Like, I don't know how to do copywriting very well. I don't know how to do all of like these metrics dashboards really well, but I understand all of them like conceptually and like pretty deeply. And I understand how they plug together to make something like work. I was like, oh, that's actually being, that is an entrepreneur. Like you have to, to know sure. all of that. Otherwise you're just like what we did for so many years and, and months and whatever the case may be, kind of have your head focused on something. Meanwhile, like this, all this crap over here is yeah, falling yeah, yeah. Once you take a step back, you're like, oh man. No, but I think even the fact just you admitting that, right, is is kind of inspirational in itself, right? Because I think there's so many people out there that are like, well, I planned this and that. And it's like, well, I, I highly doubt that. Right. Or, or like, you're yeah. like an expert on, on something. And it's like, well, if, if you're an expert on something, you, it, you can only go down yeah. from there. Right. Yeah. Like it's interesting. So it sets, sets a big standard to, to live up to. And I think people like authenticity and they can totally. relate to someone says like, Hey, I screwed up big time. They're like, Oh, me too. Like, Oh, I can do this too. You know? And like, I just don't see any reason to to put myself or anyone else on a pedestal. Sure. Well, and I also think too that people feel more comfortable either like buying something from you or learning from you or even reaching out to you and just saying, hey man, like I know you went through this struggle because I read that in your course or your book or saw you talk or something. Like what what was it again that you did to solve that problem? And you know, so maybe it's a quick email, maybe they yeah. buy something else from you or they hire you as a consultant. You never know, right? But yeah. if you're willing to say, like, I screwed this up, so like here, don't don't do that because yeah. it did not work for me. Or yeah. this did work for me, right? And you should do this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's it's not just all about failures. Like there's a lot of stuff that clearly that we we had to nail some stuff in order sure. to get that kind of success behind Beard Club. Um, but you know, it seems to me like the, the lessons that are more deeply ingrained are the ones that hurt the most. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. So you kind of touched on it quickly, but what other kinds of content are you guys kind of putting in subscription hacks? I know you kind of mentioned an accelerator. So like, how does it kind of work? Um, that's a great question. And that's something that I'm still actively conceptualizing and okay. I'm gonna have the, the first version of that live very soon and tested with a small group. 
but it'd essentially be like I, the way I envision it would be sort of um, there's 10 real main categories, the way that the information is stored in the course. So each of those 10 sections would have, um, you know, myself and, and everybody else that's in there um, able to like ask questions and create discussions, start threads. Um, I think most of the time it'll end up being myself that can answer questions, but sure. um, like I said, I'm not an expert on everything, let alone anything, but no, um, there'll be like certain questions I can't ask on like, you know, how to do this lookalike audience in Facebook marketing or like, how do you build this metrics dashboard? So I have people that can then come in and answer that question too. Sure. So it's kind of like a little diff. It's a break from like the traditional accelerator model where you get the exact same thing. You get the network, you get the connections and you get the knowledge base, but you don't have to give up 10% of your company. Sure. Well, and I think the other thing that's interesting about kind of what you're doing is you're almost building it along with the person using it. Is, is that kind of a fair way to put it? Yeah. I mean, like uh, essentially trying to create the best thing of its kind out there. So the only sure. way to do that is to like, you know, latch onto these first 50 or a hundred people and figure out the best way to get them some serious growth in the next month and, you know, have them want to tell all of their friends sure. and not be dependent upon, you know, a traditional sort of like course launch style thing and nothing against it, but sure. you know, doing a mail out to a whole bunch of affiliates or me running a bunch of Facebook ads. Like if you can make something that kind of speaks for itself and like cap it even, cause my time will obviously be limited. I can't do right. a million people in there. So yeah, I'm just trying to see where it goes to be honest. Like it's, it's interesting doing interviews like this cause people are like, so what's the plan? And I'm like, the plan is to do what I think we're doing right now. And then at <laughs> that point, I might change, but. but, but I think that's, it's, it's interesting, right? Because part of the thing, well, I, I don't know, hypothetically, like, for example, like Facebook's had some bad press recently and like not saying they're going anywhere or, or saying anything necessarily even negative about it. Some people canceled their Facebook accounts. Some people didn't, there could be a new social network that mm -hmm. kind of takes over. And I, I don't know, like MySpace, a lot of people remember that and like it's kind of non-existent now. It still exists, yeah. but nobody uses it. But like something else can come along tomorrow. And if you're still teaching Facebook and the new hot one is, I don't know, whatever, but yeah. you pivot, right? Or you move the course from this totally. or that, right? So and I'm just, I'd go ahead, love sorry. To, to add to that too, like um, I think I mentioned last time we were talking a book that I read that totally changed, rocked my world. It's called Never Lose a Customer Again by Joey okay. Coleman. Okay. And it's all about creating a membership experience. And right. I've followed Gary Vee for a long time too. And I just actually read his books. I've followed him for years and years. But in the thank you economy, like he talks about, you know, how companies aren't going to be able to hide behind phones and computers anymore. And you're going to have to have actual conversations and you're going to have to like actually like really like integrate an experience in with your company. It's going to be more like mom and pop shops because there's just infinite noise right now. Sure. There's so many, like there's only so many spots you can buy in advertising, but like all of their friends are like talking about stuff. Like there's more content now than there ever is before. So yes, you can do well by branding and sticking out ahead and outspending your customers. But if you focus like, like what I'm planning on doing with these first 50 or hundred people, if I focus on giving them like exactly what they want in a stellar, experience like they're going to go tell one of their friends and then totally. tell them right there right yeah so it's kind of like getting away from dependency on any platform at all and having those be like a great bonus to pull in like fresh people but it's super cool like and i think there's going to be a lot of businesses that go towards that digital marketer they were talking about at their last conference um digitalmarketer.com is huge and sure. um they're now actually um figuring out ways to put a value on what a customer conversation has so like oh, if they can engage someone in like a messenger chat bot or if like an, a back and forth email thing, they're not treating it as like a cost center, like customer service. They're treating it as like, you know, an opportunity to sell them and to give them an experience that they can continue to build on for years and years. Sure. The other thing, I, this is a little bit off topic, but I think it's kind of relevant. I got, I signed up for a, a service a few days ago and the founder recorded a little like, I think it was like minute long, like, hi, Kevin, like, welcome to the platform. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me or my team. And I was like, okay, it took him no time at all. Yeah. But like that little touch, and it's funny because I had him on the show and I kind of know him a little bit, but even though he kind of knew me, you know, we've, we've chatted a few yeah. times, but he still took like a minute out of his day to record like a little video and yeah. just email it to me. I was just like, wow, that's a really nice touch, right? 
and it's a, it's a great example. That's one of the tactics he talks about in the books or in the book. It's, it's powerful. Like it level of personalization, just like uh, it makes a huge difference. You know, like whenever I have a really super positive customer experience, like when someone goes above and beyond, mm -hmm. like I tell so many people, I'm just sure. like, dude, because you feel like you won something, right? You're like, yeah, yeah totally. I a good deal, man. They treated me like gold and like you just out telling like hundreds of people, like that's that's an advertisement right there, you know? No, I, I totally agree. I, I think it's it, it is interesting how it we're kind of moving towards that because you're right. Like there's a million platforms, there's a million things to buy, there's a million things to pick from that you pick the one that kind of makes you feel the best in a sense, or maybe strokes your ego a little bit for maybe lack of a better term for it. Right. Yeah. yeah Interesting. Sure. So I'm curious though, you've done a ton of stuff kind of in um, the online space. You've built a physical product. What advice do you kind of give people looking to kind of get in into the space or maybe just like take that leap of faith and actually build something? Um, to take the leap of faith is to take the leap of faith. I have a really, really good friend of mine for eight years now. He's been telling me how much he wants to do what I do. And he's like, I don't think that you really do. You just at a certain point got to go for it. He's like, I got to wait for like the right time though. And I got to make sure this is right. It's like, dude, like you want to be where I am? Like you have to go and screw up all the stuff that I did. You sure. know, I, ideally not like get the right mentorship and, and get the right networks sure. and stuff. But, um, I don't regret it. You just got to kind of go for it. Sure. Um, well, to be fair, like we talked about this in, in kind of the radio version, but you moved to a new country. Like you moved from Canada to America yeah. to, to chase this dream or these dreams, right? Yeah. I was like 28 years old and a lot of my friends are getting their first houses and getting married and sure. um, I'm 31 now. So three years ago, sure. but um, yeah, it was, it was kind of scary. Cause it was like, I had some money in the bank saved up for, I guess, a house, but I didn't really like, I didn't have anything calling me there. And I knew I was like, I had a great opportunity in front of me, but went from having money in the bank to being in like a ton of credit card debt again, like at the age of 30, you know, it's very humbling. Sure. You know, I'm like, like, is this really going to work? Like, and still like, still difficult. I still have to work my ass off. People think because our company made $10 million in our first year that we all made $10 million each in our first year. And there's 20 of us and we had to pay all these acquisition costs and all the product costs and things like that. Like, yeah, we're all millionaires. Like that's not how it works, but yeah. Um, yeah. It's just, I, I guess like that adversity to risk is I think something that not everyone has, but that being said, I've seen a lot of people that I didn't think could do something and didn't could take a plunge. Yeah. And you know, I have friends that went back to school to be an engineer at the age of like 33 and they were uh -huh. like, no, I'm already out there making money. And like, they just were passionate about it. So they did it. And like, so I think after you've had enough, then you're ready. You Interesting. Know, you have to get to that, that breaking point, unless you're just, you know, you have an eye for opportunity and you want to go for it and it excites you. But I think some people that you would count out of the entrepreneurship game will like, just be like sick and tired of me and sick and tired. Like just going to try it. Yeah. What's the worst that could happen, right? <laughs> Well, I also think too, is you don't necessarily need to just like quit your job day one and, and build something like yeah. you can build something in your spare time. Like, I think I was, I can't remember who it was, was telling me that literally, like, even if you spend like an hour a week or an hour, you know, a couple of times a week, like it's, it's pretty hard to not be able to find maybe an hour. And you take that, like, yeah, you do that once a week times that how many weeks in a year, like it's a long time just working on something, right? Yeah. And, and in just doing that small step, you can find other stuff to be exciting too, or like may change directions or may get super excited about it. And like, that's, that's literally all you do is you just get started. It doesn't need to be, I think that is like, that's a really good point. I should have mentioned that too. It's like, you don't need to quit your day job. You don't need to risk everything that you have. Like just find something that, you know, you're excited about learning more about and start learning more about it. You don't well, have to wager all of everything that you have to, in order to get started. Sure. Well, and I, I think even to what you mentioned a few minutes ago about you're literally testing version one of subscription hacks on 50 to a hundred people, right? It's, yeah. and I think you don't, you should get it out as quick as possible, right? Like yeah. if you don't need to spend a year building version one, don't, I think a lot of people also feel like they're more a part of the actual product almost going back to what we talked about before where you, like 
Alex is building subscription hacks, but if I told him that he should add these three little mini chapters to subscription hacks, then you, I, and you actually do it, I'm going to be like, wow, like, I, I feel like I'm building this thing with him, even yeah. though I'm like a paying customer, right? Like, yeah. and I've had that experience before where people feel like they give their feedback, it actually gets implemented they're like, wow, this is like my product, even though it's not really their product at all. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of a difficult dance because I'm trying to communicate that, you know, there's a lot of great information. I do know what I'm talking about in here, but also that like, it's not polished. It's not a hundred percent complete, but it's not supposed to be. And I think it's easier for me to do that than, or easier for like myself or yourself, like an experienced entrepreneur to, to be able to have that kind of like, um, you know, authenticity and like to put themselves out there like that. Yeah. than it is for somebody who's just starting up because they're still in that like, you know, it needs to be perfect, needs to look perfect. But when you've made something and screwed it up a bunch of times, you're like, oh, it still worked out in the end. Holy yeah. crap. Like that, that one disastrous thing didn't sink the company. It's good. You know? No, I, I totally agree. And I, I think I kind of wish more platforms actually promote just kind of like, here, sign up. It's a work in progress. Tell me the direction you want this to yeah. go, right? Because it's really common, like the development community, but that's yeah, it. totally. And there's an online book subscription service that, that as well that you can like read books as they're getting written. I can't remember the name, but um, that's cool. You're right. There, the other than kind of the agile like development kind of philosophy, there's not really you don't really see that kind of go into kind of any other industry. And I'd like to see that more. Yeah. I think it'll, I think it'll definitely have more not to go down this rabbit hole, but as sure. blockchain becomes more and yeah, more interesting. Uh, diversified, but we could save that conversation for another day. No, I, I yeah, <laughs> that's fair. That's, that could be a whole uh, hour. We could talk about that, but we're, we're kind of coming to the end of the show. And I really kind of want to talk about you and I are going to be at uh Supex in Florida on uh, July 26th. Uh, you're the keynote speaker, and you and I are going to have a kind of a fireside chat as well. What What are you going to maybe kind of roughly talk about there, or do you kind of have any idea? I know it's still a while out. Yeah, I mean, I'm really looking forward to just putting together some cool stuff with you. This is only the second time I've talked to you, but um, I like doing the fireside chat because, like, sometimes when I'm doing a keynote, I'm like, kind of going and doing my thing and then like to have someone like to be like, Hey, like explain that a little more. Sure. is like super helpful. Um, but most of the stuff that I speak about stuff we've talked about today, like kind of how to truly like scale a business, how to like, like see the full picture of things, um, to be able to be humble about it and ask for help when you need it. And, and kind of like get the, I guess, get the formula, right. It's really tough though. Um, like I find, even building the course, but in, in an hour presentation or whatever, you might have, um, you know, a beard care company there and you might have like something completely different, like totally. a, you know, a small engine repair guy who's just getting started on his like online marketing gig. So like I try and, and keep it valuable for everyone, which usually uses some awesome metaphors and stories <laughs> about getting screwed over and a little bit of inspirational stuff mixed in there too. Sure. But I also think it's good somebody like yourself that's open to talking about, you know, the ups and downs of this and that you're still learning when you've had successful companies, right? You've run them, yeah. you've moved on from them, you've gotten licensing deals, you've built products, you've built software, like, right? So for somebody like yourself mm -hmm. that's done all this stuff to openly say like, hey, man, I'm still learning too, right? Or I'm good at these things, but not these things, but want to learn, like, Right? Like not a lot of people will say that. So I, I think that's really cool. Not a lot of people will say that publicly. That yeah, fair. A lot that's of fair. a lot of like the mastermind event events I go to with guys who run like, you know, eighty million dollar, hundred million dollar a year businesses, like they are legit. Like people I really look up to. I'm just like sometimes you're like, Man, I don't know what I'm doing. They're like, It's okay. We don't know what we're doing either. We never <laughs> really do. We're just figuring it all out. It's kind of like life in general. Yeah. I think that's that's really good advice, man, to close out the show. But let's mention where people can get more information about yourself and subscription hacks. Um, so my personal site's thealexbrown.com uh, and subscriptionhacks.com is the website for su subscription hacks. We've got a, an ebook that I finally rolled out. Um, I, I tried to write an ebook, but I ended up writing a novel. 
my gotcha. friend was like, no, an ebook has to be shorter. <laughs> but we also have uh, we have some training videos where I break down some like the concepts that I go over in the course and stuff too. So lots of great free material on the website. Perfect, Alex. Well, I really appreciate you taking time under day to be on the show, and I look forward to seeing you at uh, Supex. And uh, have a good rest of your day, man. Likewise, we'll see you soon. Right. Thanks, man. Bye. 